Believe it or not, what you just saw was footage from a basketball game, an FMV basketball game, full motion video. Man, they were sitting down doing crunches like Squidward because they really thought this was the future. Let me explain. FMV games use the technique of recording real life footage and trying to make a video game out of it. Mostly how it goes is you have to press the right button at the right time to, let's say, activate a winning cutscene to progress. If you didn't, you'd see something like this. That was the security guard you shot. I don't give a fuck. This was mostly a thing in the 1990s when early CD games were being introduced. Because these games are on CD, you can implement footage and this is how they did it. Now, the tech wasn't quite there yet, so that's why the footage in these games looks like someone downloaded a clip off of LimeWire and uploaded it to YouTube. At 144p, there were whole companies who made these games, notably American Laser Games and Digital Pictures. Safe to say, neither one of these companies are around anymore. Now, when it comes to these FMV games, we have drag your crosshairs across the screen and shoot. Drag your crosshairs across the screen and shoot. In a Western. Drag your crosshair across the screen and shoot. At a crime scene. Let's kick butt. Drag your crosshair across the screen and shoot. In another western. Drag your crosshair across the screen and shoot. In space. You can donate a year's worth of salary to charity, and that still wouldn't be as generous as me saying these games have gameplay. Besides those games, it's mostly interactive movie type games. The most infamous FMV game is Night Trap. This game was one of the games that helped create the ESRB, believe it or not. I guess because you can put a giant alien BDSM necklace on a girl or some shit? I, I really don't know. But yeah, sports games. Maybe we'll look at these games in some detail in the future if this video gets at least 1 billion likes. But we have Prize Fight, Quarterback Attack with Mike Ditka, and Minnesota Fats. Pool legend. Yeah, my boy. Minnesota Fats. Minnesota FAT in the place to be. <laughs> I have no idea who this man is. Yeah, sorry, my pool knowledge doesn't extend much past the mini clip game and the GTA games and that version they had on PlayStation Home. Wow, remember that? Or that episode of Drake and Josh? Can you even make references to old Nickelodeon sitcoms anymore? I mean, on like a moral level. Uh, anyway, one FMV sports game to be released is Slam City with Scottie Pippen. What you gotta get? What you wanna get? Wanna get respect. So how do you earn respect? Welcome to the city that slams with no pity. I hope you're ready to slam, slam, slam city. If you're committed to hard hit, good bit, cause ain't nobody tricking, sticking, scotty pit. Man, I hope that song isn't copyrighted. Ball. In Slam City, you have to play games against four different opponents. The opponents are as follows. A I'll say zesty individual. But you look good. Really. A girl, a meathead, and a dumbass. Ball. <sighs> and after you beat all of them, you face an individual who encompasses all four of those traits. Scotty Pippen. <laughs> like, why Scotty Pippen? Was every other NBA player busy? Whoa, 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 stop writing that comment. We do not care. Playing Slam City is unlike any other basketball game ever. When first playing, I had no clue what was even happening. 
I don't even press buttons and the camera's moving all over and everything. You have to stop thinking of this as a traditional basketball game. Pretty much you have to look at the defender and wait for them to make an opening and that's when you can press a button to activate a cutscene where the ball is dunked. And you can shoot the ball. That's offense. That's literally it. You can once in a while jump for a weird looking rebound that doesn't work half the time. But that's really it. On defense, it's way worse because the guy is like dribbling towards the camera and you're at the mercy of how well the cameraman keeps the ball carrier in the middle of the frame. He doesn't. You're supposed to cut off the ball carrier and go for steals at the right time while you're in the right spot. And you'll activate a cutscene where you steal the ball and dunk it in. So pretty much the whole game is trying to trigger pre-made cutscenes. You yourself never attack the basket or dunk or do really anything. You just have to stand on a certain side of the screen and press a button at a certain time to win. There's only so many clips of your opponent defending or with the ball, so if you're like me and you're a gigantic loser, you can play this game long enough to start to memorize each clip and play accordingly. Yeah, this isn't fun at all. Like Pearl Harbor, man! <laughs> what? What the game is most known for are these cutscenes that happen after each play. Ball. Uh, yeah. These range from gambling to hitting on girls. Girl, I'll drink your bath water. You what? Bro, I don't even know if I hate this guy because of how gross he is or because of how ahead of the time he is. Much like the start of the video, this is the most interesting thing in the whole game. Though I don't understand the sound mixing. After every cutscene, the game adjusts your score with the loudest sound effect I've ever heard. After hearing this for hours, it's safe to say a little hearing aid emoji will soon be in my most used emojis. I just let matches play out just to see what little cutscene I get next. <laughs> this extends to the people you play against too. This guy named Fingers. You want some of this? You got it. I called him Zesty earlier because, well, look and listen to how this guy plays defense. Come on, Ace. Like, why does he do this? Hey, if I start sweating, let me know. Cause I ain't going out like that. Just when you thought it was bad, then the next girl has these crazy innuendos. And the best part is, I don't even know if these are actually supposed to be innuendos or not. Boy, I'm gonna drink you like milk. Foo! I'll stuff it so far down your throat you'll look pregnant with twins. Ah, he came down on you like a jackhammer. Make him call you daddy. <laughs> What the hell kind of game is this? See white man can jump! Ah! <laughs> Everyone unsubscribe, I've, I've lost my way. Well, the fun and games are over after you beat the girl because the next guy is Mad Dog and this guy just wrecks my shit. <laughs> I feel like there's hardly any openings against this guy. Like tell me, when and where am I supposed to go? He doesn't have a tell as far as I can see. On defense, it's even worse because sometimes as soon as the ball is checked to him, a cutscene plays where he scores. Like seriously, he doesn't even have the ball for a femtosecond before the game decides he scores. Like what am I even supposed to do here? This is number one bullshit. After finally scraping by Mad Dog, we face Smash. Ball. Now take everything I just mentioned with Mad Dog, but Super Saiyan multiply it by 50 with this guy. I can't do anything against this guy and his jazz hand defense. At least with Mad Dog, I can try and shoot the ball immediately. But this guy just blocks you. And let me tell you, these are some of the most hellacious blocks I've ever seen in my whole life. What did you think would happen? Ah! 
there's just a whole bunch of background spectators getting murdered by basketballs. This kid's definitely on crack right now. So after enough perseverance, and when I say that, I mean just memorizing all of his clips, we beat him. And we try to move on to Scottie Pippen, but we need more respect. Yeah, you've probably seen the respect score on the bottom of the screen. You get one bajillion points whenever you do something. So I read online to find out that you need one billion respect points to challenge Scottie Pippen. All of a sudden, the main theme starts to make a little bit more sense. I mean, do you do you really think I'm going to sit here for hours and grind out respect points against the same guy all night like some gigantic no life loser? <sighs> Roll the montage. Punk. Well, I'm glad that's over. We've accumulated enough respect points to make Aretha Franklin proud. So let's challenge Scotty Pib. What? I still need more respect. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell the reason is. I, I can't play against Pippin. The one billion points thing comes from people playing the Sega CD version while I'm playing on DOS. Maybe it's different. Who knows? But my respect levels ain't going any higher than this. <laughs> <laughs> so here's footage from a random Sega CD playthrough, and the footage is somehow even worse quality. I can't even make up a joke on how bad this looks. So everyone is celebrating on how much respect you've accumulated, and you can't even hear the characters talking because of the background music. A little wine over some ice, read some of my poetry. You know, speaking tongues, that pun. I can't hear you! Scotty Pippen pulls up in his van full of stolen Nike shoes, gives you a pair, and you play against them. Sign this contract, Ace. You're a pro now. Like me. So, like, I'm in the NBA now? Uh, I don't know. Well, you play against him and win. I can't tell you how difficult he is or anything because the player for this playthrough just runs by him every time. Maybe I just suck at the game. Man, you suck! Unfortunately, I can't put being proficient at Slam City on my resume. That would have gotten me hired just about any place. Slam City's legacy is, well, nothing really. Outside of that time, it was briefly mentioned in an angry video game nerd video. Crush him like a walnut and spring him up some It wasn't just an honor boy. What are they saying? Okay. This game has lived in relative obscurity and the FMV fad would die out along with the development studios that specialized in it. Slam City is not fun, but does have a sort of weirdness 90s charm, which is at least something. But the game still sucks. Like Pearl Harbor, man! <laughs> 